Hi guys, today I'm receiving Chloe the Dev, who is a former student of mine on Eat the Blocks. Hi Chloe. Hey there, Julian, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. So Chloe, as I mentioned, is one of my, of my students. He took the course and after he found his first blockchain job. So I thought that that was good to have him on the channel so that he could give some inspiration to others. <laughs> Yeah, glad to be here. So a little bit about myself. Um, I'll start from where I am now. Um, I'm currently a student <clears throat> at the University of Windsor uh, studying computer science. Um, I also actually have a position at the university as an outstanding scholar, uh, which basically means I get to do research and they give me a scholarship. So that's kind of fun. Um, so I basically made that decision about six months ago. Um, that was about, you know, I, I, I kind of decided I wanted to stop being a trader on Ethereum um, and I wanted to get more involved in how it worked and like the base layer of the program to get involved, but I, I had no experience whatsoever. I mean, I spent the past 10 years coaching soccer, so I was traveling the world. I mean, I went to school in New Jersey, England, I played soccer in France. I was basically traveling all over the world trying to pursue different goals and dreams of being a coach. And, and I basically decided one day that that wasn't for me. Um, I moved to Antigua to start a charity. Um, and I decided that I just wanted to help people. Um, so part of that was just doing whatever it took. So I got there and I realized there were lots of stray dogs and cats. So me and my girlfriend were down there and we would pick up trash on the streets. We would feed the dogs. We had about... 10 dogs at the peak of it that were at the, on the beach with us at uh, Fort James Beach in Antigua. Um, and it was great. We got dogs sent to all over the states in Canada um, and rescued and fostered. Um, and the plan was to eventually start teaching uh, young girls to, uh, to program. So I, I had to learn how to program to do that, obviously. And so that was kind of the, the kick in the butt that I needed to eventually was like, I, I'm going to learn to program now. Um, so I actually used Free Code Camp for about a month. Um, I'm not a front end person. As, as I said, I have a research position now um, for, a uh, for a blockchain firm in Toronto. So I'm definitely not someone who's front end focused, but I decided that I needed, like, everyone said, you know, learn JavaScript, you know, learn front end stuff. That'd be a great way to learn to program. So I was like, you know what, let's do it. Um, got involved, realized that it was a bit boring for me because it had nothing to do with Ethereum. Um, and I needed something a little more challenging. So I, got, I went to YouTube, and I started looking stuff up, but um, I'm sure, you, as you know, a lot of information is outdated, and especially with Ethereum, it, it's, very, it's very difficult because it's a very niche group of people who are learning this, and, and especially who are teaching this. There's not very many YouTubers who are teaching this, and I couldn't afford to be educated formally, um, so all I could afford at that time was, I was in Antigua, had very slow internet, and all I could afford was YouTube, and I just started learning what I could. And I happened along your channel eventually because I was getting very frustrated for a while because I was doing slowly like 0 0.4 when it was like 0 0.5. Like it was just like, so I spent like three weeks learning something and then it would all be wrong and it was very difficult and I was getting frustrated. Um, but I felt like all your information was really up to date and whenever it wasn't, you were very considerate to like make a link and say, hey, I have an up to date link and you were very, like, I know it's a lot of work and you didn't have very many followers. I think you had maybe under a thousand at the time of subscribers. So the channel was small, but you still just kept pushing out content. So I was like, wow. Like, I mean, I wish you could have seen me in my grandma's house in a, in a little island of Antigua. So, like, so happy to have all this free content. I just watched for hours and hours. I went on, you know, 1.5x speed and I just consume all the free content. And, you know, eventually I kind of made the decision, you know, I want to be a developer. I want to do this professionally. So I, I made the decision at that point to leave Antigua of, you know, uh, December of last year. So I got back home to Canada in January. Um, I, I knew I had five months before I was a student and I, I kind of wanted to, I said, you know what, if I have five months before I'm a student, it'd be nice if I had a job in five months. Um, and so I pretty much at that point decided what would it take to do, like what would I have to do to get a job when I was a student, you know, cause I didn't really, I've been a student before. I already have a master's degree in sports psychology. I've already done all that. I kind of didn't want to have to start from scratch as an undergraduate. Cause right now I'm an undergraduate student. 
um, in computer science. Uh, I do graduate in a year and a half, but still, it's, it's a big commitment. So, yeah, I just made the commitment to just get in. So, actually, I had no money at the time, so I asked my mom for $30, uh, and she lent me $30 so that I could take your course monthly. And the goal was that if I learned how to de develop something, I could, with my, my friend in Belgium, we were going to de develop a little project, make a bit of money, and I was going to pay for your, like, your $200 course, and then it would give me a lifetime subscription. And so that was, that was like, the, you know, the, the goal. Um, so I was like, if I just do, I only have $30, so if I just do 30, if I have 30 days, I'll do a dap a day for 30 days, and I'll get it done. And I had all the time in the world, so I just, so the first day took me like, you know, 14 hours of just, I couldn't code. I mean, I, I'm pretty sure I was like annoying you. I was in the, I was in the telegram chat, asked, but people were so helpful and receptive. And I think that was what I needed, like to really keep me going. Because when you program, there's just, again, there's this moat. There's just a place where it's just, you need someone to guide you along because it's like a labyrinth and you just can't, it's hard. You can get through eventually. There's just instructors out there, but those guides are helpful. And even if like, you know, you know, you get, you get to me eventually, but you know, the, the people in the group, like I put stuff in the telegram group and people, I remember, I remember one time I was so stuck and I was getting so frustrated for like three days. Um, and someone actually talked to me in a private message for hours. And like, I, we shared screens with each other and he helped me debug the program. And I was like, this is insane. Like, cause I never knew where to get that help before. So just a bit of context for people who are watching. So when you uh, take my blockchain course, you also have access to the private telegram of it, the blocks with all the other students and also me. And so whenever you are stuck or you just want to chat, or you just you want to make friends, then you chat in the group. And, and that's very helpful because uh, you don't feel like uh, you're stuck and nobody can, can help you. Uh, otherwise, if you're just doing this on your own, like it's really easy to give up. Uh, it's also good to have like this uh, psychological support. So yeah, I think that's that's something that is really really important. But uh, coming back to to your story, so yeah, you were uh, before you were doing uh, crypto trading, and and after you realized that uh, programming was interesting. So and I think that this is actually a very smart move because I think there are many crypto trader who are wasting a lot of their time. Uh, they spend a lot of time studying like all this stuff and, That's and a waste. It, it's just like how can you value this, this all this work is like either you trade work or, or it doesn't work but you cannot put on your CV hey I spent thousands of hours studying the Bitcoin market don't care don't care don't care <laughs> so exactly either you're rich or you're not rich nobody cares if you know how to trade yeah if you know I, Trade and you could program, you could take that trading, put it into a program right. and make money forever, which right. is how I made that switch. Which yeah. I realized I don't yes. want I'd make money for a week and then lose money for a week. And I realized, what if I could just keep making a little bit of money? With, with DeFi and all this stuff, it is possible to always ensure you have a net positive yield and trade. So, yeah, I, I think that one way to go from trading to blockchain is to start to look at um, algorithmic uh, trading. So already, I think this is a step up because um, yeah, you make money or, or you don't, but even if you don't, you're learning skills, you're learning, you're learning programming, you're, you're learning the, the blockchain. So these are things that you can leverage in another way than just winning with your trade. Um, mm -hmm. And also it removes the, the, the emotional component uh, out of the equation. Um, so yeah, that's like a really good way to get into the blockchain. And then the next step is to start to build uh, a smart contract and, and decentralized application on, on top of the blockchain. And, and so yeah, for, so for that, at the beginning, you don't need to invest anything. You just uh, you just hear on YouTube on my channel, uh, you'll find a ton of, of tutorial. And that's the best part. It's all free at the start. You could look like honestly, and what I say to people, I push your channel everywhere. And what I say to people is. You could become a fully paid developer professional just from the free content on your channel. Like, you don't need to pay anything. No, it, no. it'll be a little harder. Like, it'll be you, it, it helps. I think. I like, think it's it's all a matter of um, 
I, I think for me, the, the personally, the benefit of, of paying when, when I pay for, for courses, because even myself, I also buy a lot mm. of courses. Uh, and it's for two reasons. Like one is because I want to learn faster. So yes, I can find all, all the free info, but it's going to take mm. a lot of time to figure out like what is wrong. Yeah. Uh, to put to put it in in a curriculum that makes sense. So, so I oh, believe me, yeah. I wouldn't have got it done in thirty days if I didn't take the. I wouldn't. So so like that's reason number one, yeah. and, and, and then I would think reason number two for me is to also get a, a boost in motivation because if I pay for mm. this thing, then I I feel like I invested, so I, I need to make it worth it. And also support of the community if there is uh, any community that's not always mm -hmm. the case. Like, like on Udemy, you don't really have have communities. But yeah, it's usually these are the reasons why 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 I take courses. Uh, but coming back to your case, uh, one thing that I find really interesting in how you, you you find your job is so as you were taking uh, the my blockchain course you were super active on social media, on, on Twitter. Mm -hmm. And I think that was such a huge part of you winning strategy. So if you could talk more about this, that'd be very, very interesting. Yeah, so again, I mean, coming back to you, it kind of came from another piece of advice that you gave me, um, in your, again, in your free part of your tutorial. And I think I appreciate again, how much you give to the community. And I think, you know, I love it, being able to give back anything because, the advice was just, you got to put yourself out there. You got to showcase what you know, or else how are people going to be able to see it? So for me, I used to run, I used to help run a comp, uh, social media marketing company. And so for me, I knew how to showcase myself in a social media context to a certain degree. And my, my girlfriend helped me a lot currently. She's a, uh, you know, just graphic design stuff. So she, you know, made my headshot and she helps with a lot of, you know, my, my, that kind of side of things. But I kind of realized that, I had to get involved and I had to find out where the professionals were that in the field that I wanted to be in. So for me, that was blockchain research. And so I decided, okay, where are the fields that I care about? So I care about, you know, layer two scaling solutions. I care about how to, you know, secure the blockchain. I care about privacy. You know, how do we create a private die so that you can, you know, transact on DeFi without everyone knowing how much, you know, how much money you have. So I just kind of inserted myself into these communities online and, it, it, it takes a lot of time and energy, you know, and, and I, no matter what you're doing and no matter what you're showcasing yourself on, I think it, it does that. So whether it's YouTube, you know, and I, 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 I go live a little bit now just to kind of help myself remember what I do throughout the day now because I'm doing so much. Um, but so I respect you because I understand how much it takes to, 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 to make the videos and I don't even edit them, but to edit them and to showcase yourself. So whatever you're doing, whether it's building a portfolio and, you know, building some dApps to do that. And, you know, so I, I agree, like taking the course, because if, if showcasing yourself means you got to build, you got to build 30 dApps, right? And you can do it, right? But it might take you a year or, or you might take three years and you might take 10 years, right? Or it might never get done. Or you can just take a course, get it done in 30 days, take another course, go to the next thing. And I think that was what helped me as well, because you need something to showcase. Showcasing yourself is, is great, but... If there's nothing to showcase, then it doesn't really matter if you're on Twitter retweeting stuff. But yeah, I retweet all the time and I retweet everything. But I also, you know, watch webinars on my free time for, you know, cryptographic proofs. And, you know, I also, you know, spend my mornings, you know, watching you know, Ethereum Foundation talks where they talk about, you know, layer two, you know, you know scale solutions and how they're going to do Ethereum 1.x and all that stuff. So, and that's fun for me. So I do enjoy it. But everybody has those things that are fun for them. But so I think it's how do you find ways to make things that are fun for you something you can showcase? So you know maybe building dApps that you know if you like soccer or something like that, you, know, you, can, build, you can build a soccer gambling dApp. Like Starkware, for example, uh, is putting a VDF on chain. So basically they're going to have on chain randomness uh, verify. Like so actual randomness on chain Ethereum now in a, about a week or two. So. You know, if you take DAP 30 or whatever course, you'll be able to build a DAP where you could have your friends, uh, you know, gamble and have, you know, actual randomness. And that's kind of, you know, building that for your group of friends is something that might keep you motivated to do it in 30 days or in two months, you know, and having an instructor to help and forums to go through and post your code and a Telegram group and all that. And I think that's kind of what helped as well. You know, it, 
I did, I did have to show up myself a lot. It took many, many, and I still am on Telegram. I'm on Telegram all the time. I'm on Twitter all the time. I'm on all these platforms, and it's a lot. But a large part of that was also how do I educate myself enough to have something to showcase? So, yeah, know, no, I, 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 I think the, the way you, you did it, it was just great. And, uh, and yeah, and I will refer uh, people to you when they ask me, like, how, how to leverage social media to get a job. Well, take the, the follow the example. If anyone who wants to ask, my DMs are open. I always tell people, like, I am fully here to help the Ethereum space completely. So if there's anything I can ever do to help any Ethereum developer, any Ethereum person, um, I do have a YouTube channel as well. I do go live there. Um, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll put the link in the description. There you go. Um, if anyone has any questions about anything, they can ask me anything, and I'm willing to help with whatever they want. So maybe you can tell us a little bit the state of layer two. Seems you seem to be very knowledgeable in this. <laughs> uh, layer two to me is huge because I'm really into like scalability, but also security, and I think they go hand in hand. So. You know, for example, this VDF I was talking about um, where Starkware is going to basically have a consortium where they compute a random number and then insert it onto the chain. The, you know, the question I asked during the, the, uh, the webinar that got me the job that I got was, okay, well, how do you compute the gas that you're going to use to, you know, to, to put that number on chain? Because if, if I have a company that's running that is relying on a random number coming through and that number doesn't come through because the gas price was too low, you know, how, how can I run a company on based on that? Or how much am I willing to risk to, for that company, right? So I think layer two has a lot of great benefits because now we can kind of remove those barriers. So, you know, I'm a big one of, I like Starkware. And now recently I have like Validium and I think Virtuum. There's two new terms in the like layer two technology, which every day is something new, but basically, the main two ways, I guess, of scaling on layer two these days from where I know, and I am not a, like, this is, I'm a beginner, but it's like snarks and starks, or basically with snarks, you have to do, you basically have to have the p compute the, the nodes beforehand, the people who are part of the, doing the, the, the computations. But with Starkware, um, I guess they can add people and take people out. I guess the point is they do cryptographic proofs to do the computation off chain. So basically they, you, you deposit into the contract and they will sign the transactions for you off chain and do all the transaction and make sure it's all right off chain. And then they only go to the chain when they have to, to ensure the validity of the state. So they're basically able to get 9,000 transactions per second uh, with Starkware solution. Um, and there's a bunch of scaling solutions going down. So you have like Matter Labs, I think it can do, or they're trying to do about, you know, 4,000 transactions per second. You have Loop Ring doing, you know, 2,000 transactions for their, and for their, they're using Snarks, not Starks. So, but the, it's really cool because now we're going to see ecosystems being built on top of layer one because it will still cost to move between different rollups, right? So, you have, to, you have to deposit into a roll-up, and in that roll-up, it's cheap to move, uh, and, and you can like, basically trade for free almost, but if you want to play a video game, you still have to deposit your F back to layer one, or use a bridge from layer two to layer two roll-up. So, Interesting. And so out, out a lot of, of issues here as well. And, and out of all these projects, like, who, uh, which one is the most advanced? Well, I, I kind of have an idea of what you're going to answer. But <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I would say Starkware uh, only because they do, they, they, they released their, um, I think it's, they just released their Stark X exchange. Um, and like they, they are kind of ready. Like they did get funding from the Ethereum Foundation as well to kind of do all this stuff. So in my opinion, they do have like the backing of the EF, which, you know, does pull some weight in my opinion, because like they do have the community support in that way. Um, and in my opinion, these layer two scaling solutions, a lot of them do still rely on trust assumptions, um, especially the ones that get 9,000 transactions per second. So if I have to make a trust assumption as a DAP developer, I would rather trust the Ethereum Foundation as, because as, you need at least one trusted party in the consortium 
um, and then you're good to go. So if there is one trusted party, and Ethereum Foundation's part of it, Starcore is part of it, I think like they're gonna have like Vitalik be part of it. So in my opinion, that's enough level of trust for, for that moving forward. Um, and I could be wrong on some of this, so <laughs> don't quote me. I try my best to know things, but you know. You will be held responsible. <laughs> I, I know, right? Someone's gonna, someone's gonna email me later and be like, you're wrong about this, this, this. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I did my best. I'll try and learn. <laughs> And so let's say I'm a blockchain developer and I want to get started with uh, layer two. I mean, we, we're going a bit off topic here, but I mean, that, that's okay. No, I mean, this is great <laughs> because at the end of June, Starkware has a webinar uh, teaching people how to use. Uh, Starkware is actually coming out with their platform and is, look, is actively looking for developers right now to build on their layer two solution, 9,000 transactions per second on the rollup. So they're actively looking to teach developers, to train them, to work through it. So if you reach out to Starkware, they will walk you along how to take your DAP project and be able to get 9,000 transactions per second, you know, obviously at the highest level, right? But um, yeah, I mean, I would say that's the direction. If you're, if you're a DAP developer or you're thinking about, you know, oh, I can't scale, I have a project and I don't know what to do because I can't scale. Well, in July, apparently the product is going on main chain. So... You'll be able to scale in July. So now is the perfect time to learn how to be a DAP developer because all these issues of scaling are pretty much gone in a few weeks. So, well, I'm which sure. is exciting. Gone, but they, they're, they're changing. Have to this. act now. <laughs> exactly. Act, act now. You have 30 days. <laughs> perfect. Perfect timing. Uh, thank I'm you. excited for it. Yeah. So. That actually happened as well. So someone reached out to me from Starkware actually, um, and that's how I got invited to that um, webin uh, that training session. So I'll be doing the training. So if anyone has any questions, ask me July 1st, and I'll be able to walk you through any Starkware training to incorporate Starkware into your dApps, hopefully. So. Cool. Yeah, so if anybody has some very difficult question, then go to the <laughs> webinar and... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and make Chloe feel Not too difficult. <laughs> I'll tell you where to go. I'll just tell you who to ask. Uh, well, uh, can you uh, give me uh, what's the what's the alpha doctor, or something? Doctor, <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> well, Chloe, well, thanks a lot for coming here, and um, and I think that was very inspiring for people who want to become blockchain developer. And and so just to quickly recap. You guys, if you have just one thing to learn from Chloe is that uh, after you build your blockchain portfolio, which you can do with, uh, with one of my blockchain course, uh, DAP30 or Six Figure Blockchain Developer, I will put the link uh, below. Um, you, after you do this, it's very important that you go out there on, on social media and you talk of what you learn so that uh, you start to be noticed by, by company. And the mindset is you have to be helpful. You shouldn't try to take but you try to try to give, you give, 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 even if you feel like you don't have much to give, but just being enthusiastic, just be interested somehow. It, it already gives. There's always somewhere to insert yourself into the community. There's always somewhere to, to be helpful. Even if you can't code whatsoever, there's DAOs to be a part of. There's different things to help out with. There's always something to do. So find a way to get involved. Uh, if you don't know, get involved, ask me, I can get you somewhere involved and you know, find a way to plug, get plugged in. Well, thanks, Chloe, and uh, good luck at Stockware. Thank you very much. I hope I understand what they're talking about. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. Thank you for the talk.